Welcome to the Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast. I'm your host, Steph, also known as Knitting Samurai over on RAV, and this is episode 54. Yes, I am. <laughs> so, it is May 22nd. Where is the month gone? I feel like I'm like chasing it and it's just out of my reach and ah, it's almost the end of the month. Oh my gosh. And Steve and Dad's, well, it's all of Steve's family this annual fishing trip that they go on is here. They're going tomorrow, which means it's the end of the month, Memorial Day weekend. They always go over Memorial Day weekend. And I'm just like, oh, that means it's almost June. That means the year's half over. That means it's almost Christmas. <laughs> I work in retail. So, you know, there's a lot of the year we're planning promos and whatnot. And that's one of the directors, his favorite joke is, you know, it's almost Christmas, early Christmas. And he, he'll walk around singing happy holidays. So it's really funny. Anyway, um, <laughs> that was rambling. I did not intend to tell you that. So, the, yeah. <laughs> uh, this past week, I went up to very northern Maine to, uh, with my mother to stand on behind the rope at the red carpet for my cousin's high school prom. It's crazy. It's crazy. I spent 14 hours in the car with my mom to watch my cousin be announced and like she looked beautiful and it, it sounds crazy but their town does this grand march and so there's this whole thing about the cars that everyone drives and some people have chauffeurs and full on tuxes and gloves and yeah one couple came in a fire truck. <laughs> my cousin and her date came in like a 64 Porsche or something like it was a classic car that matched his vest and boutonniere like I don't know if that's why I picked a car but yeah so that was my weekend so no no recording this past weekend and no rolling footage because he was with his grandparents on the other side and my dad Steve split time between the two houses so well Steve and Roland obviously so that's uh that's my been my week and I have quite a bit of knitting because I did most of the driving. My mom has a broken arm right now, so <laughs> when I agreed to go up there, I was like, yes, 14 hours in the car, I'll get to knit for at least seven of those. No. She did drive, I think, two hours out of the trip, so I did a little knitting, but um, yeah, so you want to see some knitting? Let's do that since that's what you're here for, right? Last week, I showed you the um, Franken Dinosaur. That I've been working on, <coughs> but you didn't see it. Mm -hmm. uh, the camera shut off, and before it shut off, I underestimated how far back it shut off, so you didn't get to see it, and I wasn't going to re record. So even though I haven't worked on this this week, there is some progress to you, right? So he now has a tail. This is loosely based on Terrence the Tap Dancing T-Rex by Rebecca Danger. I am knitting him with Cascade Heritage, and you know, I've discovered something about myself. I really, really, when I watch podcasts, I really like to see the pattern. So I'm going to try and do a better job of showing you if there is a pattern showing you what it is I'm working on, because it's just, I don't know, you don't always know the names of everything. So, let's see. So this is Dinosaur's Banquet by Sandra. Boynton, you've seen him before. That's the book that the uh, that I'm taking the little creature out of and trying to knit. So here's my version of him. Oh, whoops! You're not getting to see as much as I would like. So there you go. He's doing pretty good. He's not spot on, but he's looking good, and he even has crazy eyes, like the dinosaur sort of does. So um, he has one arm finished, which I've shown before. So really. If I could just get my act together and knit the four stegos <laughs> excuse me, knit the four stegosaurus things or whatever they're called, plates, and the other hand, that's because I'm dreading knitting the other hand because this first one was a huge pain, um, he'll be done, he'll be done. So I'm working my way through. I thought I heard the car door because the guys are en route, but I'm recording anyway. So. That's that. Um, the other thing that, oh, sorry, I don't have blockers. Oh, you really like it when I have soft blockers, don't you? I'll be a good part. So, the other thing I worked on <clears throat> in the car were these gothic striped socks. Goth striped socks, not gothic. Um, <clears throat> and 
so here's the first one. You've seen it many, 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 many times. And when I was knitting this one, this is just a two by two rib. Um, and as you know, I am completely in love with this yarn. So I really am just enjoying working with it and watching how it pulls, I'm not pulls, watching how it's striping. But to accomplish the stripe sequence on the first sock, so here's the first sock, I um, broke up off my yarn when I started doing the increases in the red for the heel, toe up. Obviously, if there were cuff down, you'd see a cuff. <laughs> so I, I uh, started a second strand of the yarn to match it up with the red. I've talked about this before. So what I'm trying to say <laughs> is that I used more than the normal stripe section for this black part and the purple section right here, the black and the purple, and then um, I was able to reline up the red portion with, you know, I just stopped using the purple and started using red to make sure they would line up with the front because I want my stripe sequence to be similar. It doesn't have to be the same number of rows. I think the row count here is two, four, six per color. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly spot on the same, but I want it similar. So then, this I actually did, so Saturday we ran around all day to the hairdresser and you know, getting the dress on and getting everything set on her to my grandmother's house, like all over the place. And um, while we were doing those things, I was working on my sock and I wasn't really paying a lot of attention. I was visiting <laughs> and I was able, to, I managed to work my gusset increases and I just kept knitting because I was having fun and wasn't paying attention and I did not bring in a second skein of our second section of the color I was working on so you could see that the black and the purple right here got very narrow compared to the other stripes earlier on normally that drives me insane I was halfway through my heel flap when I realized what I had done and so I said well that's life so they're not gonna be identical twins I know and they're socks for me so this will be an interesting exercise to see how I do but you know what they're going to be under my pants, and the foot part is exactly the same, because I do love to line up my stripe. So you can see that about here they go a little off, and that's just how it's going to be. So um, that is, I didn't tell you any details on it, that's the US size 1, 2.25 millimeter needles, the goth stripe colorway of Inspiration Dye Works, and it's their basic sock base, which I believe... I don't have my tag. It's rolled up in my skein. Um, okay, I'm not going to believe anything and guess that it's an 80 20. I'm not sure if it is or not. But So those made really good progress. They've been purse knitting for a while, but I also um, worked on something else while I was up there. Okay, you don't want to watch me untangle, I'm sure. Um, so here's. Here's the story, kids, because it's a long one. You ready? I try to bring you positive, positivity because that's what you come here for. You don't want to listen to me complain. But really, there's no way around complaining about this pattern. <laughs> and I've done a little bit of editing online, but not nearly as much as I would like. Um, so Friday night, when we got up there, because we got there at like 2 in the afternoon, no, noon noon because we were crazy and we couldn't sleep and my mother was up at 3.30 and I was up at 4.30. We're in the car by 5. I know, and driving. But anyways, we're morning people were up here. <laughs> um, so on the way up, I don't know, at some point on Friday, I cast on for the little star out of the 60, uh, I have it written down, 60 quick baby knits, that cascade book that I'm knitting all of my co-workers baby blankets from as you recall yes okay so here's the pattern it's this beautiful little lacy number okay here's what I want you to notice when you look at it it looks like a square with a star in the center of it but here's the part I just saw today <laughs> it's actually folded over on the edge so it's not a square blanket it's a rectangle and the way she accomplished that rather than having the um, motif centered in the middle of the blanket, she has you knit it, stop, and then go back and forth in stocking it. 
which, uh, I don't know, I feel like there should have been a disclaimer that this whole pattern wasn't written in the round. So that's, that's minor. That's minor. Okay. So, <laughs> and I've decided that, okay, well, fine, I'm not going to stop. And the, the blanket, I have lots of notes all over this pattern. The blanket, the finished measurement should be 31 by 39, and I'm just going to make mine a flat 38 by 38 and keep it square and just be happy with that. So, but back up. I had to figure out my yarn because you know how it is when you're going on a trip. You have, like, packing the knitting is the most important thing. I pack my knitting way before I pack anything else, and things go in and they come out. Like, I pack. I had like seven projects going and it was like, okay, never mind that, never mind that. But in the process of pulling things out, I forgot my notions pouch, which was kind of like, ah, frustrating. But, um, so I had to pick out the yarn, right? And I don't know if you saw it, but this is, you saw this, this is a very uh, feminine pattern, I thought, and I'm knitting it for a little girl and I wanted to use cream yarn. I was looking at all of the mountains of, uh, cottonese that I've recently purchased for all of these baby blankets and I wanted to use cream and then it was like well I don't really want to use cream to make it look like this and I thought she's a princess she's a girly girl girl so or her parents are going to make her one so why not use the pink so I am in fact knitting a pink blanket um and it's weird because it's I set it next to my peasy and it's the same shade of pink that rosy pink color so this is cottony ease um, I don't know the colorway name. I'm calling it pink, but that's not it. It is berry. It's what they're calling it. Um, yeah. So there's that. And that's a 50-50 cotton acrylic blend. I'm knitting on US size 8, 5.0 millimeter needles. I believe that's the size the pattern recommended. And after knitting my last blanket on 9s, I like the drape of the 8s a lot better, because why would you swatch? Uh, <laughs> So the trouble started at about 9 o'clock on Friday night, and I was quick to blame myself and say, Stephanie, you are tired, and that's why you can't figure this out, but go look on Rad and see if there's a Rad. There is a Rad, and it was two rows back from the row I was on. No wonder my stitches weren't lining up. So frog, frog, frog. And then, sad story, the next morning I get up and look at it, and so I had missed... Use your error. I had missed something in here and it had a, like a, I want to say nipple. I don't know. It just had this weird plop up in the middle of the blanket. And so, okay, fine. Rip back the whole thing almost. Almost the whole thing. Start again. Work on it some more. I get to row, so it was like 16, 17 ish, round 16 or 17, when I first had problems. And that was caught in the errata. I get to row around 31 and nothing makes sense to me. Nothing's lining up. No, I have to re-engineer the pattern based on where I'm going and what the picture looks like. And oh, by the way, this is not the front side of the blanket. This is the back side of the blanket that they took a picture of. Um, <laughs> and so I had to figure it out and then it, I got it back in line and it worked again and it worked for another until row 51, 50, 49, I think is where, yeah, 49 is where my notes are. And then it fell off again, and it fell off hard, and it never got back. The pattern does not match the image. Um, this, if you look at the, the picture, there are these pairs of, I want to call them leaves, all around. The instructions are only written as if you're going to knit a single one, like an asterisk, and brackets were left off in key places on every single row for the last 13 rows. Okay, my annoyance is coming through. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> so, I would give this um, blanket, even though, yeah, you're probably wondering what it looks like too, even though it is very pretty, and I like knitting it around, of course, um, even though it's very pretty and delicate, I just made it past all of the crazy instructions and now I'm just doing the X parts out on the legs. Um, yeah, I would rate this as extremely difficult as written, which is silly because it shouldn't be. It's just yarn overs and knit two to get, you know, decreases. Like, it's not a complicated pattern whatsoever, but like this. This stitch right here, which is a make six, was left off in places. It's like, well, that's kind of key to the design of the blanket. So, um, 
And you know what? I'm going to love it when it's done. I'm going to think it's absolutely beautiful. And I'm going to do change the pattern a little bit. So instead of do, making it so it's a off, off centered, uh, the, so the star is off centered in the body of the work, I'm going to make it so it's centered. So that's one change. And then this has you do a crochet edge. I, that's one thing that, like, okay, maybe it's that's a great skill to pair with knitting. But I bought a book of knitting patterns, not a book of crochet patterns. And as an exclusive knitter, I'm getting, I'm just frustrated with this pattern. Like, leave it there. Leave it there. Um, so instead of doing the scalloped edge with crochet techniques, I'm going to use, oh God, which one was it? I can picture the shawl I was knitting. It was purple. It was by the lady who... Um, designed the hitchhiker are you yelling at me it has a scalloped edge on the bottom of it and I think she gives instructions there were like a couple ways to do it anyways I knit that in all the purples by Lisa by Brennan and I really loved the way that came out there we go 22.5 degrees is that what it's called that's what I called it yep 22.5 degrees by Martina Bim she has um great edging on that that I'm going to lift and put on this. Let's see if I can show it to you. So that's what the edging looks like on the pattern. Yeah. Put that on the edge of my baby blanket and because this is worsted weight instead of fingering it's probably going to be very bulky but edges should be bulky. So that's my frustration for this week and the pattern this baby blanket is pictured with the stockinette side up the pearl side is the upside according to this and another pet peeve about the pattern she has you purling for 30 some odd rows 25 rows I decided okay we'll just turn my work and I'll knit in the round instead of purl in the round for that many rows so there you go that's my my grousing and feel bad for me this is annoying <laughs> so I'm um, not recommending this pattern unless it gets rewritten. Um, it is, I am, however, knitting this as part of the baby blanket knit along and I am flying through it in case you didn't notice. So I'm, I've finished one skein. I have two more skeins. I don't think I'll use both of them. The pattern calls for about 800 yards. Uh, no, not 800. It can't be 800. If it's 800, I don't have enough yarn. Oh dear. <laughs> Pattern calls for material 128 times 6. Don't watch me do math. It's 7 and change. So I'll probably, yeah, I'm a third of the way through it then. I'm going to need to use all, I'm going to need all three skeins of this, and that's like 600 yards, but I'll call it good because I'm pretty close to square now. So that's that. <laughs> I am knitting this for the baby blanket knit along um, over on the wrap group go over and chat it up check out what people are working on get motivated there are some great projects out there crocheters welcome come crochet baby blankets the most babies are born in June, no July August and September so you must know someone out there having a baby that you could knit a baby blanket for I happen to be so lucky as to have four pregnant co-workers or co-workers having babies. I guess guess Jeff isn't pregnant. But anyways, oh, and I did give, we had the baby shower at work and he got the blanket and he liked it very much. And his wife had some pre-labor stuff last night, but no, not yet, not yet. Not ready for that fresh baby to arrive. Um, but it's not exciting. It is, it is. So, baby blanket did along. <laughs> Be part of it if you want, and there'll be a, uh, you could post a finished object every single month until October 31st, yes, yes, and every month there'll be a drawing for those who have completed, so the first drawing will be May 31st, so any blanket you want, knit it up, post an FO, you've still got time, you've got about 10 days, I could totally knit a baby blanket in 10 days, you can too, you can too, so, um, what else do I have to show you? Let me adjust my notes. I know, no notebook. Mm -hmm. Lastly, because this has been, did I show it last week? 
it's gotten some love, so I feel like I should show it again. This is the Tatton's Cry Sock, because that's my favorite. Apparently, that's the sock yarn of 2013 for the Knitting Samurai, because I think this is my third pair this spring in this. And this color is a lovely muted marl brown rose color. What's up with the pink? Um, I don't wear a lot of pink, that's for sure. Anyways, <laughs> I say that because I just noticed that my notebook, my pens, one day I went to a meeting and I had my notebook, my pen, my phone, a sweater, a scarf, and my jeans. Everything was blue. Like, my undershirt was white, but everything else was blue. And so I've just been like, what's up with all the blue? But now I'm seeing a lot of pink in my knitting. So, this is coming along 2x2 two two rib, US 1.5s, 2.5 millimeter needles, Patton's Croy rag shades. And I am doing it a little wider than I normally would because the person these are for has a wide foot. So, that's it on the needles. So this has also been a little purse knitting there. Um, I think these are probably going to be a 5 inch cuff and I think the ones for me are going to be a 3 or a 4 inch cuff. I like shorter cuffs. I, for some reason, does this happen to you? In the winter, putting on tall wool socks seems like too much work to me. So I have some 7, 8, 9 inch wool socks and I hand knit that I just won't, and that's too much work. Too much work under my jeans or under my pajama pants. So I'm hoping if I knit myself some short ones, I'll like them more. Yeah. Are you noticing I'm opening a package? So this is, um, I am a member of the Tri-Dye member. I'm a member of the Tri-Dye Fiber, Yarn and Fiber Club. And that is, I joined for April, May, June. And the dyers are Knitting in Color, which was the crazy grandma fish colorway, um, Fiber Charmer, and Gales Art will be the last one. So this is my Fiber Charmer, who I've heard of, but I've never had any of her yarn before. The other two I've had, so this was like my new surprise one. And I didn't open it, and Steve's been trying to get me to open it. And I just haven't, because I was sort of kind of waiting. Oh, look at it. It comes in tissue paper. <gasps> Don't you love getting things in tissue paper? There's more. There's right up. Go ahead. Make me sing. The inspiration for this month's tri-dye colorway is based on a photograph of a giant clam I found on Pinterest. Okay. So, the big unveil. If you're in the club and haven't gotten it yet, I can't imagine why you haven't. Alright, here we go. <gasps> Ooh! Ooh! <laughs> a Swedish fish. <laughs> oh, and some stickers. Under the Sea, May 2013. This is an 80% superwash BFL and 20% bamboo. 437 yards. Very nice. Very nice. So can you see the uh, the pink? Oh, this wants to be a shawl. It totally wants to be a shawl. Where? Um, oh, it's beautiful. It's very. It's sort of muted. I don't even know. Like the pinks and the blues and the green pop, but then they sort of blend together into this greeny. Yeah, very cool. So that's my new, Ooh, new yarn. And then, um, what else did I want to talk about? Baby blanket is done. Um, I know I talked about what's up and coming on the needle, and then I fell in love with knitting, and road knitting changes what you're going to knit. But I still need to knit that baby hat and the three other baby hats, so maybe that'll get on the needles, but for, I should hold that out as a treat after I finish the dinosaur. We'll see. I know. It's, it's all psychological. It's all mind games. <laughs> and this episode is called Yes I Am because that's how I felt while I was working on that baby blanket and I just wanted to throw in the towel and quit several evenings the past few days. And it was like, I'm going to finish this thing. Yes I am. Damn it. <laughs> Look at me getting all explicit this week. Woo! Anyways, I hope you enjoy the next few days of your knitting. I will be back sooner rather than later, not just in 10 days, because I want to get another one in before the end of May. Hopefully. Hopefully. We'll see how it goes. Um, and that's all I have. Take care. Thank you for sharing your time with me and sharing my life with you. And Wait. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. I will talk to you soon. 
I couldn't resist. I find him eating a hot dog hilarious. Hot dog and raspberries. Raspberry. Those are awesome. I love raspberries. Could Daddy have one? Thank you. No, no, no. Yeah. Where? Those are much better than the other. Good job. Yeah.